It's not because of city ordinances. It's primarily because of the self-interest of the builders, the self-interest of the insurance companies, the self-interest of the people who live in these buildings. Nobody has, nobody has an incentive to watch one of these buildings collapse, to be in one of these buildings as they collapse. Right? So first we have to realize how rare an occasion this is, how rare of an occurrence this is, and, and, and how unusual it is, and uh, before we start asserting responsibility and blaming the system and blaming contractors and insurance companies and landlords and tenants and all of this stuff. The first thing you have to do is observe how unusual this is and how the system, in terms of building safe buildings, works pretty well, works pretty well. Buildings that we live in are unbelievably safe. And the fact that we all take their safety for granted, even though we might go up in New York in a 60, 70 story building, and we don't think twice about it, is a testament to, to, to modern, to, to, to what's left of capitalism and freedom and, and, and the fact that we have a high level of trust in our society, which is what you get in freedom. In freedom, you have a high level of trust. What you're trusting is the self-interest of the other party. What you're trusting in is the, good, the fundamental goodwill that people have, that, 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 that fundamentally people are not about cheating, cutting corners, and, and not caring about consequences. That's not what most people are about, even as many people on the left assume that about them. Now, let's look at what actually happened in Florida. I know we don't have all the details, and it's going to be interesting to monitor the story and see what happens. It looks like about three years ago, a, um, an engineer warned the, uh, the condo association that there was significant damage in the foundations around the pool area and in the garage. Now, actually, before we get to that, how are these buildings, who owns these buildings? I mean, who owns the building? Well, the people who own, own the building in Florida and the people who own the building that I live in, in Puerto Rico, are the tenants, are the people who live there, or at least the people who own the apartments, the condos there. So you buy a condo, and part of the price you're paying is you're paying for the shared space in the condo. And you pay an association fee, and my association fee in, in, um, in Puerto Rico is very, very high. It's, it's much higher. It's 20 times, almost 20 times higher than what I paid the association fee in a gated community in California. And the reason for that is in the gated community, first of all, the gated community was massive, so there were a lot of people paying a small amount, and that was enough to, to take care of the roads and to take care of the common spaces. A condo is, is relatively small. There are far fewer units, so the cost of maintenance is spread over fewer people, and therefore the cost is high. But part of what you pay when you buy a condo is for that common space, and then on a monthly basis, you're paying for its maintenance and upkeeping and for insurance. The building has insurance. And for any fixing, any structural damage that might occur, to the common areas. What are the common areas? Well, it's, it's the lobby and places like that. But more fundamentally, what are the common areas? More fundamentally, the common areas are the foundations. Are the foundations of the building, the garage, the, 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 the columns, the things that everybody in the building relies on, rely on to keep the building up. So um, that's... Who owns the building? It's the, 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 you know, I got accused of, it's, the, the, the accusation was, I said that, uh, well, we'll get to what I said in a minute. Anyway, so the condo association is, there's usually a board that the owners of the condo vote and appoint people to this board, and this board manages the common areas. And when there's an important decision to be made about spending money or about new policies, by the way, our condo buildings has a, has a pretty thick, you know, guides and policies, what you can do, what you can't do. The board, for example, in our building has decided you have to wear, you, you know, that during COVID you had to wear a mask in the common areas. Um, and uh, they decide kind of on pool hours and how, they, how, how the gym is run and they, you know, the money that we pay monthly, it pays for the gym and all. So, and pays for the cleaning and pays for all of that. So the board is elected by the owners 
And the owners of the condominiums are the ones that are responsible now for the maintenance of the entire building. Three years ago, the owners of the building, the board, was told that there was significant structural damage in the foundations of the building. And they were given an estimate of what it would cost to fix it. That estimate would, it was, it was significantly higher than the amount of money that the condo association actually had on reserve. Most condo associations have reserves to cover kind of regular maintenance issues. So they would have had to have a special assessment uh, that would basically had gone to every condo there, and you would have had to write a $10,000 check or whatever it would have been to the association. They would have pooled all the money and used that money to fix the building. Now, during that same time that I guess this, this uh, construction uh, engineer told them that, uh, that, there was a, that there were these foundational problems, okay, um, the, uh, there was also a, go a government inspector, and I read this, and I, I, you know, again, I don't know how accurate this is, the government inspector who told them, well, but it's safe for now, don't worry, it's safe. Now, Sam Seda, during the interview, said to me, they were warned by both the government inspector and private inspectors that there was structural damage. And I said, if they were warned, why didn't they do anything about it? And if they didn't do anything about it, then aren't they the ones responsible for what happened? And don't you want the people who are making the decision, the owners, they should bear the cost. Right? The cost financial. And if they don't do the action, then they bear the cost, and in this case, tragically, in lives. So what happened? You had people who, they basically decided not to act. Right? Not to act. They decided to not fix the problem, or they decided to delay, and they got into arguments. How much should they pay? Who should do the work? Which condo should pay how much? Now, it's not true that most of the apartments in this condo building were renters. Most of the people in the condo building owned their condos. They were the ones fighting it out. They were the ones disagreeing. They were the ones who delayed fixing the building. So who's responsible? And how do you fix that? Well, I know you fix it by coercing them, forcing them, or maybe what you could do is the government could pay for fixing the building. And the government could just pay for fixing all buildings. Or maybe you could force them to fix the building. What if, what if one of the condos doesn't have the money to pay for it? Well, then you, I don't know, you force them into bankruptcy or something. So Sam Sado and the left's attitude towards this is, it just shows that we don't force people to take care of themselves enough. And my attitude is, this is, a, this is tragic. It's a consequence of the inaction of the building owners. They paid the price, the ultimate price, as horrific and as sad, as horrible as that is. They paid the price. If there were some renters there who weren't aware of what was happening, it's sad, it's tragic that they died. The fault is on the owners who didn't fix, who didn't do the fixing, who argued and debated instead of acting. But the solution is not government. The solution is for all of us to learn the lesson. If somebody tells you there's a problem with your building, it's structural, and it might, you know, then do something about it. Act. Fix it. Don't put yourself into a position where you will die. Or people you rent apartment to will die. Nobody wants their renters to die. So there's a lesson learned here. And the lesson learned here, don't procrastinate about things that are crucial to life. Don't procrastinate about your health when a doctor tells you you have to do X, Y, Z. Don't procrastinate about any aspect of your life. Make the most of it. And to do that, you have to act. And so the people who died for the most part, again, there were children there, they were innocent completely. But you know what? Children suffer the consequences of the bad behavior of their parents. And most of the people who died are owners who participated in this debacle, who were part of the problem 
in a sense that they didn't solve the structural issue. They didn't commit to paying the money that they needed to do it. I don't know why that's so controversial. And the solution is not more government regulation. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.